I am an ICU RN. We had a septic patient in the unit. She was 29 weeks pregnant. She went into labor on my shift, and we delivered her baby stillborn. I did post-mortem care on the baby, retrieved the proper transport container, and walked the baby down to the morgue. It was the middle of the night, I'm in an elevator alone. I hear a baby start wailing. I absolutely lose it and rip open the cover, and just as I go to zip down the bag, I hear a calming male voice say, Hush little one, I've got you, no need to cry. The crying stopped immediately. Shaking, I opened the bag and saw exactly what I expected to see. A deceased 29 week old baby. I am a big, bearded, 40 year old ICU nurse, and that was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. No one believes me to this day. I don't even want to speculate what the crying or the voice was. Even typing that out, I felt my chest tightening. We had a younger man a few weeks ago who passed suddenly. One night, after closing up and hitting the lights, we walked towards the back hallway. As I looked down the hall before heading out the door, I saw a man with dark hair and a dark suit at the end, just standing there. I thought it was a director. When I blinked, he was gone. The director with me that day was in a light gray suit and had blonde hair. The next day, I went to close the casket in the chapel. Lo and behold, it was the same gentleman that was in the hallway the day before. Two of my co-workers said they experienced similar events, such as when walking past his casket, they felt like they bumped into someone, but no one was there. There aren't many options in Atchison for funeral homes, so almost everyone in town has been to all of them at some point in their lives for a service. I remember as a child sitting on a chair in the lobby of one of the more prominent funeral homes bored out of my mind during a visitation for a distant relative. A kid I knew from school walks up and says hi, and we start to chat when something catches my eye. Far down the hallway going into a closed off area of the funeral home, I see the hands of an old man come around the corner and grasp onto the wall. Slowly, the old man peeks his head around the corner and just stares blankly down the hallway into the visitation room. I'm thoroughly weirded out and look over at my friend who is staring down the hall. He turns to me and says, what is he doing? When we looked back, the man is gone. We didn't ever really talk about it again until 20 years later, when I got a call from my old friend out of the blue. He says, this is going to sound crazy, but do you remember the old man at the funeral home? I was a little hazy on it, but I did remember. He continues to say, well I was just there and my daughter saw him. During the viewing for my uncle Bill, she came over and asked my wife why the creepy man down the hallway was staring around the corner at uncle Bill. There wasn't anyone there. I could hear the fear in his voice and I instantly got chills. I have been back to that funeral home many times now, and I have not seen anything else. But I still get uneasy any time I walk past that hallway. Most nights as we were returning to quarters from a run, my partner and I would scope the parking lot for vagrants or people that shouldn't be there before we opened the bay doors. While looking on more than one occasion, we would see a light on in the adjacent building on the top floor. There should have been no lights on. Figuring someone had gotten inside, we would watch the building for more lights. No other lights ever came on, but on every occasion a young woman in a dress would come to the window and stare at us. One night, after seeing the figure, we got brave and called some law enforcement friends from the area to help us search the building. We went to the room that had the light on expecting to find a vagrant camped out there. The only thing we found was a room that had untouched dust on the floor and no light bulbs in the sockets. We got the willies and split. We never went back into that building at night. My grandpa was the mortician for a small town in the late 1960s. The morgue was attached to the house that my mom lived in. One day, her boyfriend Tom came over to the house 
and no one was home. They had been dating for a while, and he was comfortable going inside and waiting for my mom to come home. On the way into the house, Tom noticed that the door and windows into the morgue were open, so he checked it out, found it empty, closed everything, and went into the house. A few minutes later, he heard a loud slamming noise come from the morgue, so he ran to see what was wrong and found that the doors and windows had been thrown fully open again. He got out of there real quick. When he told my grandpa about what happened, my grandpa just calmly explained that they had picked up a deceased woman that morning and the spirits were there welcoming her and visiting with her. Next time Tom should just leave the doors and windows open. During my apprenticeship, I worked at a funeral home said to be haunted by an old funeral director assistant who had a heart attack in the building and died. All he ever did was mess with the chapel lights, and if you called him out, something like John, the family is coming, please don't, they would return to normal. Not really sure if I believed it was really haunted, but saying something always fixed the issue, so I kept doing it my entire time there. This is a story about my experiences while living in this funeral home. There was an elderly man who came in to pick out his own casket. He told my father that he was terminally ill, and that he had about a month to live. The man was very easy to please, he wanted a simple casket, simple sermon, a few songs, and a few loved ones. He did however have one very strange request, he wanted to be buried with his cane on top of the casket. He explained to my dad that the men in his family that have died before him all were buried with their cane outside their casket. He made the joke that it was because he would need it when he woke up out of the casket and would go on a walk with Jesus. My father promised the man his wishes and the man left happy. Sure enough about a month later the gentleman passed and his funeral went perfectly as planned. He had a sweet, simple service with about 20 close friends and family. A few songs he picked out, and his daughter sang a song to him. Fast forward about an hour after the funeral, and to the burial site. It was a nice little area with a handsome gravestone with an angel carved on it. My father gave very strict instructions to the grave digger that after the casket was put in the cane was to be placed on top, then the dirt is to be added. The man said he understood and my father left because he had to prepare for another funeral. The next day a man from the cemetery came to the funeral home, saying that he thinks someone left an item by the grave. It was the man's cane. My father was so upset because he gave very strict instructions to the digger about the placement of the cane, and told him the importance of it to the man. My father was very distraught because he felt like he failed the man's last wishes. My father took the cane to his office, and was going to call the family and ask if they wanted to have it. And this is when it started. The cane was everywhere. The cane would show up in all of the different rooms around the funeral home. We would see it hanging on doorknobs, on chairs, leaning against walls, in the bathrooms, on my bed. We knew for a fact that the cane was haunted by the old man, and he did not seem too pleased that he didn't have his cane in his grave. Besides the fact that the cane would show up unannounced in random places, that was a treat compared to the other thing the cane did. It tapped. In the middle of the night my sister and I we shared a room, and often a bed when we were scared would hear it tapping on the ground as if it was being used, slowly assisting the ghostly figure to his destination. Our room was right at the end of the hall, and we would hear it walk past our door into the wall, then stop. Then the sound would start up in another part of the house. My mom got so fed up with it one day that she locked it in the supply closet under the gym. There was only one key to that door and mama had it. We all went down to the supply closet and watched her put it on the top shelf, shut out the light, closed the door, locked it, then wiggled the handle to make sure it latched. We all saw it get locked in the closet. After that we went upstairs to our house and enjoyed a nice family dinner and a movie. My daddy always did a walk through right before bed, just double checking that all the lights were out downstairs, and he locked everything. 
We ran down the stairs to see what happened, and the cane was hanging on the doorknob to his office. I am still skeptical of things like this, but I used to work as a medic in a rural area. One call, we were transporting a patient who was actively having a heart attack. It was a decent time before we got to the hospital, and after working the patient up, I started talking to them. At one point, this patient started talking to themselves, or so I thought. They were looking to my left and answering questions, responding, and I thought maybe they were getting confused. Then, they looked at me and said, you know, he died in here last week, but said you were so nice. This patient went on to describe a previous patient I had that died from a car accident while we were taking him to the hospital. My partner and I were talking to him as he was somewhat conscious, but his injuries were too severe to last. I've never really told anyone this story other than my wife. A few years ago, I decided to get into funeral work as a part-time gig and see what it was like possibly doing a career shift into that line of work. Called a few in the area and only one wanted me to come in to talk. Drove to this funeral home and of course it's the oldest, creepiest one in the area. The director came out and she was super pleasant and actually offered me a part-time job helping out. She puts me on a one-week on one-week-off schedule for helping with the actual funeral services and also removals picking up a recently deceased person. My first removal call was around 11.30 at night. I was nervous to say the least. I show up to the home and she's waiting in the removal van with a cot. She tells me we are going to the hospital morgue to pick someone up. We get there and she goes through the motions teaching me the process, moving the body from slab to cot buckling them, wrap them, and away we go. Get back to the funeral home and wheel him into the prep room. I helped her move him onto the table and said she wants me to help set his facial features. Not going into detail, it's a little intense for me. After we finish, I'm at the sink washing my hands and the phone on the wall turns on speaker mode, dial tone, then nothing. After the phone started making these weird slow pronounced sounds, I looked at her and she said, okay that's enough for tonight. And we left. Two days go by and I come back in to help dress this guy into his funeral tux. Again the phone does the same thing. I asked if that phone ever done that and she said it hasn't. Next day is the funeral service. We get everything prepped in the church, then everyone is showing up. The minister was going on about this individual and his time in the military. He said that this guy had stuff to do with Morse code type things. The director looked right at me like a light bulb went off, and it dawned on me that the phone sounded like it was doing Morse code. I'll never forget that and always wondered if and what he was trying to tell us. Starting when I was about five, my parents bought a funeral home. It was well over 100 years old when they bought it. They owned and ran the funeral home, and it's a pretty large funeral home in my area. We lived in the upstairs area of the funeral home. They still own and operate the funeral home to this day, and I visit pretty regularly and occasionally have experiences. I had a very interesting childhood growing up. As a child I had many experiences every day all the way up until I moved out at 19. Some were terrifying, and some were comforting. We had many resident spirits that just stayed around. Some were human, some definitely weren't human. Each had its own personality and temperament. I still have experiences to this day when I go visit my parents. The first experience I remember was when I was about six years old. I was sitting on the couch in one of the viewing rooms and I got the feeling of being watched. I looked up and saw a woman standing in the corner of the room. She was a young woman in her mid-twenties. She was wearing a black dress. She was very pale and she had long red hair. She smiled and waved at me then said hello little girl. I said hello back and she smiled again then disappeared. She would become known as Alice 
the most extroverted and nice of the resident spirits in the funeral home. She was very talkative. I formed a very good relationship with her, and she pretty much became like a second mother to me. She was the matriarch spirit in the funeral home.